is my soul the King of heaven. To his feet your tribute bring, ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven, evermore his praises sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the everlasting King. Praise him for his grace and favor to his people in distress. Praise him still the same as ever, slow to chide and swift to bless. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glorious in his faithfulness. Father, like he tends and spares us, well our feeble frame he knows. In his hands he gently bears us, rescues us from all our foes. Alleluia, alleluia, widely at his mercy flows. Angels help us to adore him, you behold him face to face. Sun and moon bow down before him, all who dwell in time and space. Alleluia, alleluia, praise with us the God of grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, we confess that we are sinners and ask the Lord for pardon and for strength. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God of glory and love, peace comes from you alone. Send us as peacemakers and witnesses to your kingdom, and fill our hearts with joy in your promises of salvation. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah, the 66th chapter. Rejoice with Jerusalem, and be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice with her in joy, all you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast, that you may drink deeply with the delight of her glorious bosom. For thus says the Lord, I will extend prosperity over her like a river, and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse and be carried on her arm, dandled on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. 
You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see, your heart shall rejoice. Your bodies shall flourish like the grass, and it shall be known that the hand of the Lord is with his servants, and his indignation is against his enemies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before you all the earth shall bow, shall sing to you, sing to your name. Before you all the earth shall bow, shall sing to you, sing to your name. Cry out with joy to God all the earth, O sing to the glory of his name, O render him glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Before you all the earth shall bow, shall sing to you, sing to your name. Because of the greatness of your strength, your enemies cringe before you. Before you all the earth shall bow, shall sing to you, sing to your name. Before you all the earth shall bow, shall sing to you, sing to your name. Come and see the works of God, tremendous his deeds among men. He turned the sea into dry land, they passed through the river dry shod. Before you all the earth shall bow, shall sing to you, sing to your name. Let our joy then be in him, he rules forever by his might. His eyes keep watch over the nations, let rebels not rise against him. Before you all the earth shall bow, shall sing to you, Praise your name. O peoples, bless our God. Let the voice of his praise resound of the God who gave life to our souls and kept our feet from stumbling. Before you all the earth shall bow, shall sing to you, sing to your name. A reading from Galatians, the sixth chapter. My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work. Then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share all good things with their teachers. Do not be deceived. God's not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us do good to all, and especially to those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I write in my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they can boast about your flesh. May I never boast about anything except 
the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them and mercy upon the Israel of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Alleluia. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. After this, Jesus appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals. Greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there. Say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever rejects you, rejects me. And Whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread upon snakes and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Jesus has come and brings pleasure eternal. Alpha Omega, beginning and end. Godhead, humanity, union supernal. O great Redeemer, you come as our friend. Heaven 
heaven and earth now proclaim this great wonder. Jesus has come and brings pleasure eternal. Jesus has come, now see bonds rent asunder. Fetters of death now dissolve, disappear. See him burst forth with a voice as of thunder. He sets us free from our guilt and our fear. Lifts us from shame to the place of his honor. Jesus has come, hear the roll of God's thunder. Jesus has come as a mighty redeemer. See now the threatening strong one disarmed. Jesus breaks down all the walls of death's fortress, brings forth the prisoners triumphant unharmed. Satan, you wicked one, who now your master. Jesus has come, he the mighty redeemer. Jesus has come as the king of all glory. Heaven and earth do declare his great power. Capturing hearts with a heavenly story. Welcome him now in this fast fleeting hour. Ponder his love, take the crown he has for you. Jesus has come, he the King of all glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, St. Mark's, ponder his love. Take the crown he has for you. Jesus has come, he, the King of all glory. That's why we are here, in person, virtually, in the community, through the work of our church body throughout this state, this nation, and the world, to invite one and all to ponder his love, to take the crown that he has given to us. That is what this day is all about. The gifts of God in Jesus Christ, the gift of pleasure eternal, as we sang in today's hymn of the day, a pleasure that comes not by pampering the whims and desires of the flesh, but from the one who is Alpha Omega beginning and end, the one who is Godhead and humanity in union supernal, the great Redeemer who comes as our friend. He has come to us. By God's grace, he has come to us to bring not the pleasures of the flesh, not to grant us our every desire like a genie from a lamp, but to bring pleasures that are eternal and not just pleasures that last for eternity. He has come. Bonds of sin and death, of addiction and despair and depression, all burst asunder. The fetters of death themselves dissolve like we heard about Peter's chains dissolving in last week's reading. He bursts through with a voice of thunder, the voice that is the word of God made flesh, sets us free from guilt and fear, lifts us out of the shame of our sin, death, weakness, incompetence, anxieties, fears and depressions, and lifts us up. Hear the roll of God's thunder, St. Mark's. 
for the threatening strong one who first deceived us in the garden, who chained humanity to the weight that is death and drowns us in the sea of our own brokenness. That threatening strong one has been disarmed. He breaks down the walls of death's fortress, brings us forth, the prisoners. We are triumphant and unharmed. This is the definition of good news. This victory, this eternal pleasure that has come to us through the King of all glory, who gives us his love and offers us that crown of eternal life. This is the gospel. And what are we to do with that gospel? Wallow in it as if we were wallowing in a warm bubble bath in a dimly lit room? No. He has given us a job. The harvest is plentiful. We cannot claim, oh, the Lutheran Church can't grow in this neighborhood. There just aren't more Germans and Norwegians moving into the neighborhood. The harvest is plentiful. There is no excuse that, oh, well, we live in a secular time and age and society. No. The harvest is plentiful. The problem is that the laborers are few. How many of us are willing to risk an awkward conversation with a neighbor or a co-worker about what might give us hope when they begin to whine and complain about the seeming hopelessness of life? The laborers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers because it's not going to happen just because your pastor harasses and harangues you and finally, to get him off your back, you agree to serve in this or that role at the church, though you should. It is, in fact, because it is the Lord of the harvest who sends out laborers into the harvest. He sends you out. How many times do I point to this same verse? To go in peace and serve the Lord. And how do we serve him? By going out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Not as lions to fight with wolves and hopefully we win and they lose. To admit the reality that we are above their hatred, their violence, their misperceptions and distortions of the way things are. We are simply to go on our way, accepting the risks, accepting the challenges, because it is him, Jesus Christ, who sends us. We don't count on our resources. We don't look to our parish budget, our bank accounts, our leadership team and assume they are going to help us carry out the ministry. No, we carry no purse, bag, or sandal. We don't waste our time with indifferent chit-chat by greeting people on the road. We simply come with a message of peace. Whatever house you enter, for say peace to this house. When you get up in the morning to share that cup of coffee and tea with a spouse, do you look across the table and begin that day's relationship with a prayer for peace in that relationship? After your commute into work, when you go into the same office with the same annoying co-workers and the same unrealistic expectations of your boss, do you enter that experience with dread, with anger and defensiveness, or with a word of peace? Peace be to this house. If there's a person of peace there, it will rest on them. If not, it returns to you. You are not harmed by your good will. It's not about what you get out of the experience. And you don't build relationships 
for how they might help you. Don't move about from house by house. What Jesus is saying is don't, well, okay, I'll start re working with these people. But as soon as I have an opportunity to upgrade to another set of relationships, they can stay behind. No. When we enter a house, we pray for peace. And why? Because they should listen to us, because we know how Congress should vote on certain legislation that is considering? No. Whoever listens to you listens to me. So you better not be saying anything in your own name apart from what I have to say. And what is that? The kingdom of God has come near. Jesus has come as the king of all glory, we just sang. Wherever Jesus is, there is the kingdom. Whether they accept it and receive that pleasure eternal that comes from receiving him, or whether they reject it and turn it aside, is not up to us based on our outreach strategies and commitments, our extrovert personality, our perfectly articulate ability to express the truths of the Christian faith. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and chill, it will happen, but whoever rejects you is not really rejecting you. They're rejecting me and my Father who sent me. We don't hear a word about what those 70 disciples did. Jesus told them to go and heal the sick and to proclaim the kingdom, to show good news in deeds, and in words, we don't hear about how they articulated the faith, what they understood, what their evangelism strategy was. We simply hear the results. They returned with joy. Lord, blows our mind. In your name, even demons listen to us. And Jesus redirects them. People. It's not about you, it's about me. He said to them, ha, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. I've given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over the power of the enemy. News flash. This doesn't justify the weird Christian offshoots of Appalachia that believe they've somehow proved the sincerity of their faith by handling um, poisonous snakes and avoiding dying. What Jesus is talking about is, of course, the one whose head was crushed when the Son of Man came into the world, takes us back to the Garden of Gethsemane, when that, the Garden of Eden, when that slithering, slimy snake came with his lies and distortions and brought death and sin into the world. But there would be a descendant of Eve whose heel would indeed be bruised, he would suffer, but who would crush the head of Satan underfoot. It is precisely that which Jesus accomplished in his death and resurrection, and we who have been baptized into him, who have joined him through faith, we share in that same ministry. Every time we turn away from a temptation, every time we offer a word of love, compassion, and witness, we are trampling Satan underfoot. Demons are submitting to us. Sometimes people who get fascinated by images of the occult and spirits and demons, imagine it to be something of which to be afraid. He is a toothless lion, about as scary as the cowardly lion in the story of the Wizard of Oz. He can harm us none. He's judged. The deed is done. One little word can fell him. That is, that word made flesh. 
that is Jesus Christ. It's not about our successes. It's not about our power. It's not about the fact that even spirits submit to us. Our names are written in heaven, which takes us back to that triumphant song that was our hymn of the day. Because what makes us rejoice, what gives us pleasure, is not our successes, is not our ability to influence legislative or um, um, Supreme Court agendas. Jesus has come to bring pleasure eternal because he is the king of all glory. Heaven and earth are declaring his great power. He's captured our hearts with that heavenly story. And so we welcome him now in this fast fleeting hour or 44 and a half minutes or whatever this recording may turn out to be. Ponder his love, St. Mark's. Take the crown he has for you. Jesus has come and he's the king of glory. Amen. Living together in love and in hope, we do confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us join our hearts and voices in prayer for all who journey with us into the kingdom of God. For our church and parish community, that every work and prayer of ours may proclaim the compassion and peace of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the ministry of our Christian day school, that our administration, and school board, church council, and voting body might have the wisdom, energy, and creativity to plan for the future of our ministry. Together, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the families of Arts and Mission New York, that their homes may radiate with the Holy Spirit's love, joy, and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our new Mission of the Month, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and its disaster response work, that through our efforts together, the mercy of God might not only be proclaimed in word, but be experienced indeed by people in their times of need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all bishops and pastors, commissioned ministers and deacons, for the members of religious orders and communities, that our lifestyles of simplicity, charity, and peace may give joyful witness to the reign of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the people of God at Trinity Lutheran Church in Hawthorne, for their pastor, Reverend Dade Ellsrod, that they might faithfully engage their neighborhood with the gospel of hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the nations and peoples of the world, that God may bless them with peace and prosperity forever, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For college students and young adults, that the Spirit of God would open their hearts to take on the work of the harvest, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who suffer from illness, persecution, loss, or addiction, that they might find comfort in the healing love of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our nation, 
on this Independence Day weekend, that we might live according to our highest ideals, that we might seek to gather the common good rather than the assertion of our own wills, that reconciliation, harmony, and well-being might be the goal of us all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the prayers we now make in the silence of our hearts. In thanksgiving for all who have died in the peace of Christ and await the day when they will rise with him to newness of life, including St. Mary, the mother of our Lord, St. Mark, our patron, St. Thomas, Jan Hus, our own Adolf Meyer, and all of our departed family members, friends, and benefactors, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Hear our prayers, O Lord, and be with us on our journey. May your peace guide our steps, your hope light our way, as we journey through this life to the joy of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In your word, Lord, you have filled us with every blessing. Grant that we may hold fast to your saving gifts. Never cease to sing your praise. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.